Hide all the insecurities. Welcome, 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 welcome. Hey, welcome to the Jimmy Curve. Hello, everybody. Hello, everybody. Hello, everybody. Hello, everybody. About to get bumpy. You guys keep derailing me. I did, and, and I, I did, did it endearingly. endearingly. Will's got jokes. Hey, hey, hey. <laughs> Will is the Sarlacc pit. I love beer. I like that too. Pork broccoli. Snowflakes. Hail <laughs> back from it. Thank you guys for listening. <laughs> I learned a lot. <laughs> keep up the good, good work. work. Thank you for listening to The Jimmy Curve. Thanks for tuning in. Thank you for downloading the show. I am your host, Jimmy Putnam. With me, as always, our co-host, Joshua Vossler. Hello, everybody. And Will Doherty. I don't have a catchphrase. That's okay. You don't need one. No one expects anything of you. <laughs> <laughs> Joining us on the show. Jimmy makes Will sad. <laughs> Joining us on the show for the third uh, time back. Friend of the show and special guest and good friend of ours, Ryan Dow. Three strikes and you're out. Uh, so Ryan, welcome back to the Jimmy Curve. You are moving to New York. Uh, New York uh, City. <laughs> <laughs> to pursue greater salsa. <laughs> Uh, uh, the point of those ads was that San Antonio was where they make paste piccani, so why would I get good salsa in New York City? No, you're right. I completely fucked it up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I just, I appreciate the implication that San Antonio is not, a, like, a modern city in the world. It's just still, like, a backwater town where you can get, like, fresh vegetables. <laughs> <laughs> is that not true? I don't know. I've never been there. As far as I know, all they have is an Alamo, and then that's it. Ryan, I was about to say you are moving to New York City to pursue comedy. Is that accurate, or are you just moving to New York City to pursue different life stuff? I think that it's like uh, you have the opportunity to move to New York City, and uh, you'll just go and do comedy there. Like, it's right. not... It's not like, I'm going to pursue it, and I'm going to... I don't believe in myself, so I don't think that I'm going <laughs> right. to succeed. To say that you're pursuing anything would be inaccurate. It's more that you're fleeing from what's here. <laughs> yes. Okay. Would you say that you are a goal-oriented person? No. Okay. I'm Because I'm not either, and I, like, I don't... If you set goals for yourself, you run the risk of, being, of not achieving them, and then being even more sad... So yeah, I never yeah, yeah. set goals. It's bury the bar in the sand so you can just walk over it. Yeah, yeah. It's a series of <laughs> it's a series of well, let's see how this turns out. Well, I didn't expect anything of me, so I'm fine. What but you've gotta be excited about some parts of moving to New York. There's a lot more to do. There's yeah. basically that. Um yeah, I've been to I've lived in New York actually for a summer before and How did that go? Um, yeah, it was terrifying. Uh, it's a lot of people there. Um, I... Pretty, well, you love that. Yeah, I love people. <laughs> <laughs> it's just like, uh, I kind of have, like, debates with myself. I'm like, Ryan, don't go to New York. You'll be, like, just miserable and angry and, like, well, that's just me in general. So, <laughs> I don't... Yeah. That's you every time I've hung out with you. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> That's why I like Ryan. <laughs> right. But I feel not like only, that's not only the only reason I like that. <laughs> the, the experience of going to New York and being like your angry, miserable self is that you're not used to meet people meeting you with that energy. <laughs> right. And yeah. Is that part of it? Like, I feel like I feel like you don't want to, like, you go to New York and then all of a sudden other people are more pissed off than you. Oh, like with valid reasons? Yeah. It does, valid or not is not really relevant. It's just that, like, that's something that you then have to deal with. But maybe you'll feel more comfortable. There's more of your kind. Yeah. Simpatico. Yeah. Tell us. So, is... I'm sorry. I, I have no, to ask. I is, it, is it safe to assume that, you know, in addition to just celebrating Ryan's life before he gets slaughtered in New York, uh, we're also having him on the show because we need to have... Uh, you know, because I just had him on my show, on the Love's Company show this yeah. last month, before he moves. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, just to placate that, like, uh, not technically non-zero percent chance that he does go to New York, get famous, we need to make sure he remembers us here. <laughs> 
Uh, I, yeah, you know, that doesn't concern me because I, I assume, I just go through my entire life always assuming that the second everybody walks out of the room that I'm in, I am instantly forgotten forever by them. Well, I feel like even if Ryan did become famous and like I'm sitting at the bar and he's, he's doing late night or something and he's on there as like, yeah, I, I used to do comedy with that guy. I know that guy. More than likely, they'll be like, "I hate that guy." <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's true. Well, there's a there's a weird thing. This is a, this is an interesting topic because there's a weird thing where when somebody gets famous and you haven't had any contact with them for a long time, even if you were kind of friends with them for a while, I always feel like, oh, they've moved on to bigger and better things. Like they don't want anything to do with me anymore. Even if that's entirely untrue. I just, in, in my mind, anybody who has any little piece of success has no reason to bother with me anymore. And I don't expect it. Like, it's surprising to me when they do remember me. Yeah, that's why you make them say, <laughs> of course we will, while you're recording it I had on that, their show. I had, that, inter I had that, that interaction with Sam Talent last time he came through town. Sam Talent is a comedian who travels around and does stand-up comedy where... Did you know Sam Talent? I don't know him that well. It's just I've been on shows with him. Like, I know Jack and Dusty, and he always stays with them when they... Or, or he has stayed with them when he's come through before. Like, I... Oh, and, and like, he was... Uh, he was... He Hosted one of the live shows we did at Backline that I was, you know, so I was in sketches with him. We didn't hang out. We weren't good friends, but it's just I've shaken his hand any number of times. He comes to Omaha quite a bit. And like the last time he was through, I kind of I did like this shuffling, staring at my feet. You know, like, oh, if you remember me, I'm Jim. And he's like, dude, I, I know who you are. <laughs> and I was like, okay, I, I don't know. I was just oh, that's called Ryan doubting it. <laughs> <laughs> I had another... I had that same interaction with uh, Steve Berg, who I was in acting classes with in college, and he's like in commercials and stuff now. And he came through backline, and he he he, did, he had no idea who I was. Steve Berg and I like used to party with the same group of people in college, so he didn't know who I was then. But he's got kind of famous, and he came through, uh, and we, and I was like, oh, you know, I don't know if you remember me, and he was just like, nope. <laughs> So you didn't have the same interaction with him at all. No, no, not at all. I, but I, I initiated the same right. interaction. Then it went dramatically different. I was more comfortable with that version where he was just like, uh, I don't, you know, and then I started naming names. I was like, oh, yeah, because we were always over at this guy's house. And he's like, oh, yeah, I know all those people. <laughs> <laughs> so that was very strange. So I'm assuming, Ryan, that you're going to, you know, you'll be relatively famous in a, in a short period of time. And then I'll I'll be going around telling people like you, you know I'm I, here here's the term that you always use for that it's like I'm Facebook friends with him, but <laughs> no, that means like, he probably doesn't remember me but we met one time and he said and he clicked accept yeah, yeah. that's well the premise is ridiculous like, no <laughs> it's not gonna happen but like uh, amongst the Facebook friends thing like have you ever been Facebook friends with someone saw them in real life and then they're like uh who are you. Oh, for sure. If you yeah. talk to them. Yeah. No, I like, yeah, people like I went to college with that were like that. Like, that's, or uh, even uh, Jim K, or he was just like, what's, what's your name again? And I want to be like, you Facebook friended me, asshole. <laughs> <laughs> well, I am having the, uh, the reverse of that actually happening right now, which is that my 20-year high school reunion is coming up, and the people who are in, putting it on, like, formed a Facebook group. So I'm suddenly getting all these Facebook friend requests, and I'm like, I don't know who that is, but it's all through this one group, you know, that we all joined or whatever. Or I am I was looking through the group, and I was like, okay, I know. For, like, for one thing, half of the women, you know, their last name is different. So, there's no, you know, and I haven't seen them in 20 years, so I don't know what they look like. That's weird, you know, but uh, there are also a lot of guys there, too, where I'm like, okay, I just... I'm not trying to be a dick. I just, I don't remember names and I don't remember who that was. So, uh, you know, and like fucking nobody's who they were in high school anyway. They're all fat. <laughs> well, I, I mean, case in point. Yeah. You know, uh, they're probably <laughs> looking at me being like, I don't know who this fat guy is. Like, you know, and I wasn't Jimmy in high school. I went by Jim. There are probably a lot of people like Jimmy. Weird. I don't know. Yeah, it is, it's pretty unusual that people add the long E sound to the end of their name later in life. Right. 
that's usually something that starts at the beginning and then falls away in time. Yeah. I've never been to a high school reunion, but I feel like it, it'd be ironic because I think the person that people would remember the most was actually probably the weird kid in high school or the weirdest kid. You know what I mean? Hmm. Maybe. Everybody would remember the name of the kid that they were like knew they had to watch out for. It's like, <laughs> right. Okay, if we need if we're gonna not get murdered, we gotta watch out for Winslow. <laughs> Case in point. Perfect. Perfect. Uh, Ryan, you are the namesake of my favorite new game to play when I have alcohol in my system after midnight, the Ryan Dowd game. Uh, we've talked about the Ryan Dowd game on previous shows. It is where you go around the circle and tell each person one thing you hate about them. Why do I love that so much? Uh, I think that you have, you're have both emotionally needy, but yet have a lot of rage, I'm assuming. <laughs> Yo! Yes! <laughs> I, very, no, no, you, we're not supposed to start playing the game yet, right? <laughs> <laughs> I I considered initiating a Ryan Dowd game right now. The problem is none of us are drunk and Joshua is here. <laughs> yeah, I don't play that game. <laughs> it's my favorite thing to do, but that probably bespeaks ill of myself. Well, it's the type of thing that, like, I, I think that it's, it's wildly interesting because you see, like, a skill set of people who are both very good at navigating social things and they know how to do this type of thing in a way mm -hmm. that's still, like, interesting but doesn't hurt people's feelings. And then you also get the people who do that and it's just crushingly honest and then you just aren't prepared for it. Both of those things happen, and it's amazing. That second thing is my favorite part of it, and it's because I am uh, I am attracted to honesty more than any other personality trait. It's my favorite thing, and I never feel bad when people when I know people are being honest with me, but I rarely am confident that anyone is being a hundred percent honest because the fact is that's just not how humans interact socially most of the time. So my, my problem with the game isn't so much that people would tell me negative things about myself. That part doesn't bother me. Right. My problem I have with the game is me telling people what, you know, being honest and being negative about other people. That's my problem with it. That's what I have a hard time doing. I don't know. I just honest interaction to me is never sad and it's never depressing. It's only, like there can't be any part of that because it's true. It's It's just the way things are. You don't. If something is honest, it's not personal to me. I don't know. That's how I look at I it. I mean, I've read books like How to Win Friends and Influence People, and it's just like it, it, that whole premise is you're doing the complete opposite. Yeah, be a phony. <laughs> yeah, well, whatever. <laughs> yeah. I mean, whatever you want to call it. I mean, it works if you want people to like you. Right, you know? right. If well, you I invented this game. Clearly, I don't want people to like me. <laughs> See, but this is a different... Well, I think the thing that you're describing is the way you make people who are, like, strangers or, like, like work associates, people that you don't have an actual, like, f like a legitimate relationship Yeah, you would with. only play the Ryan Dowd Yeah, but if you friends. play that game enough, that's all you're going to have. You're not going to have any close <laughs> friends. <laughs> you can and I, and, right, yeah. and I disagree. I, I think it makes people closer. Because, well, I mean... the. Will, Ryan, and myself have done this now three times, and, like, I don't have any resentment about it. I've only felt better after doing it. I don't know, Will, you guys, have you guys had resentment after this? I haven't, but I can constantly come up with things I hate about people, so <laughs> the, game, the game never ends for me. <laughs> so... Right. I think, he, like, you're you're trying to, I think the difference, like, the Joshua, like, the reason you don't like it, like, I think you're trying to make it about something that's, like, intellectual. I think the difference is that you're just, like, a happy person. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> out of everyone in this room night right now, and typically probably in any bar when we're doing comedy, I feel like I'm one of the happier people. Yeah. But it, you think it's phony, though? No. Uh, no. I don't think it's funny. Are you are are you putting up a false front to mask unhappiness? 
No, I don't think so. I, I mean, I, I don't think you are either. Because you guys have seen I'm me Max. when I. You guys have seen me when I'm not happy. It's not like when I'm not happy, I pretend to be happy. Right. Uh, maybe I just get over stuff quickly, and I. Oh, uh, this is an intervention about your happiness. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we don't want to start directing like you've affected all of the... me negatively in the in the following ways. <laughs> Josh, one thing I hate about your happiness is. Uh, no, I, I, yeah, I mean, it's not for everybody. No, but again, no type of specific social interaction is universal. I mean, I might play it if I get drunk enough. I might play, it, but I feel that'd be the wrong time to play that game. Is when no, that's the perfect time to play the game because when you're drunk is when you <laughs> start telling the truth. The most honest. Here's the other thing that I think is going to be different between you and me. Never has anything been said about me that is remotely as bad as I feared it was going to be. Because there's nothing that anyone can say that's as bad as what I'm saying inside my own head all the time. What, it, it, Challenge like, accepted. <laughs> uh, there's going to be a weird edit point, and when we come back, I'm just crying. <laughs> I thought I'd recover, but uh, we don't have time. we got to get this episode done. I mean... Uh, I'm, maybe I'll try and play it. No, no I don't I, want to talk it, you into it now. If it makes me feel uncomfortable, I'll stop, and I will never play it again. <laughs> uh, I'll try anything once. But you also don't recognize the Jimmy Curve is legit. Like you're just you're the, the, the voice of dissension around here. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> That's what, yep. This, Let's, it's all. It's all. It's all bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> let's uh, let's get topical for a second, guys. We are recording this episode on. Tuesday, June 30th, 2015, uh, the Tuesday after the weekend in which the United States declared gay marriage to be legal all throughout the country. Is there, there's probably a, a more political love one. way. I do a, I do love a, one. Woo. So, you know. Do a happy drop for that. I, I thought, I thought we'd just have the, uh, I thought we'd just talk about that for a second and. The segment where we talk about stuff. I don't know if I don't know if I should use that one or this one. The issues. <laughs> well, you went well, with you both. Did both so. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I did both. So uh, it's all I've read about on Facebook for the last four days. Recently, Texas has, I don't know if it's the governor or somebody, you know, somebody with authority basically told the clerks within Texas that if it was against their religion that they didn't have to reckon, they didn't have to sign uh, gay marriage certificates. And in Kentucky, uh, they just said, yeah, we're not going to do that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, can they do that? I don't know. I don't, we'll see. Sure they can, and then we can civil war them. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> there is a precedent for this. There is. I, I keep seeing people post on Facebook. This is funny. They go, uh, for all you people who keep posting that this is ruining America, screw you. You don't understand. Like, finally, for all this stuff, like all of this, you know, pro-gay marriage. And, and it's, it's, it's phrased in an argument against people that I'm not seeing because apparently I don't have any friends who have posted negative shit about it on Facebook because I haven't seen anything. I've only seen people arguing with nobody for a thing that happened. <laughs> you know what I mean? So that's like the weirdest. Like I almost have the, the most opposite. I almost had an opposite reaction. Like, okay, I get it. You're glad this happened. And yes, it's sort of a momentous occasion. But like, don't take ownership of it. <laughs> You didn't do anything. I see the the thing that you're describing. I see that happen every time a celebrity dies, except what I see is people on like Facebook and Twitter going, God, I hate all these people making jokes about this current celebrity death. And right. I haven't. All I've seen is that. Yeah. All yeah. I've seen is people saying that. And I haven't seen anybody making fun. I'm. It's out there. It exists. I'm sure. Are you guys Facebook friends with people who have posted, like, anti-gay marriage stuff recently? I've never yes. seen it. Yeah, I am. Oh, okay. I used to live in Fairbury for a while, though. <laughs> Fairbury, Nebraska. <laughs> I, there, I don't know. I, 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 I lived in... I'm from here, but I, I'm, I lived in a couple small towns. 
Fairbury and Beatrice, and yeah, I mean they think a little different. I mean they're a little more traditional and religious. It's it's not so much like uh, it's not as derogatory as it is in like our government screwed up because this happened. You right, know, this would never happen if Obama won president. You know, it's <laughs> that sort of stuff. Right. Yeah, I've seen a little bit of that. A weird one that I've seen a lot though is I've seen like people of a very of like Christian and Catholic stripes acknowledging like kind of giving up on the gay marriage issue saying like well we lost but like trying to pretend like they were cool with it the whole time right like, right this isn't this is a legal question and not a religious question i understand that my religion doesn't have to be the sort the arbiter but it's always like i've al i've multiple times seen people doing that as a way of saying and that's why we've got to stop these abortions <laughs> right. why are these gay people pushing abortion on us right i'm like that's a you're conflating weird issues <laughs> it's a reach <laughs> <laughs> i'm not sure those issues connect <laughs> yeah. uh I, I i i said this the other day and as it was coming out of my mouth i i was I was like, boy, that's something that only a complete asshole would say. And yet, I totally believe it. And it was this. I was raised constantly. I feel like I was constantly shouted at. You have to respect everyone's views. You have to respect everyone's opinion. Give people a chance was my parents' like mantra for me. Like, Because every time... You know, when you're a kid, when something happens that you disagree with, you're like, that's stupid. But, you know, people have different opinions, different views, and all of that stuff. And, like, as an adult now, I do believe that everyone has a right to express an opinion. But I also believe that there are some issues where we don't have to respect your opinion. If you think that it should be illegal for gay people to get married, I don't think we have to respect that opinion. I don't disagree with that idea, but I think the problem is that, like, we've created such a division, a divisive uh, culture of just, like, debate and, like, like the, the media culture that we've created that's always very us versus them in yeah. every argument. Right. Like, you don't have to respect that opinion, but don't treat people with that opinion like they're villains necessarily. Yeah. Like... People who are the, – the abortion argument I think is one of the most it, like pivotal ones in that regard because mm -hmm. people who are pro – people who are like pro-abortion rights are viewed as like by the people who are against it as people who literally just want to murder right. – babies right. as if that's their motivation and people who yeah, they're are, portrayed in the media as like cartoonish villains yeah. yeah and people but but and by the same time people who are against it uh are portrayed by the other side as people who want to destroy women <laughs> right. and they're like only setting out to subjugate the female sex and in both of those cases they're wrong it's worth noting that people who are against abortion probably genuinely believe that they're trying to save the lives of children. I think that's misplaced, but it's worth remembering that they think that. Well, abortion is also a specifically unique one in that that argument has now been raging for 75 years with n zero progress being made by either side. Right. Like, no one has budged. Progress tends to only move in one direction. Like, Women were going to get the vote sooner or later. <laughs> well, that's why right. I mean? maybe, like, maybe sometimes people should just w change the way they think. Maybe it's not should uh, gay people be have the right to be married just as everybody else, but maybe question why does the government have the authority to decide who can get married and not? I yeah. agree why, with you 100. Why, yes. why do you need to seek approval from from any form of government to be with the person or be married to them? Yeah. Uh, the answer to that is because you don't. You can engage in whatever religious ceremony you want. You have to get the right to get tax breaks from right. the government. That's what you have to get from the government. And, like, adoption rights and other things like that that can be tied Hospital to Hospital visitation. Yeah. That's what you have to get from the government. They're not going to stop you from a marriage or shaman or whatever. Right, but a marriage certificate is basically granting you you are now married. You know what I mean? Well, they're, you, right. You were granted well, they're the not permission make, to... Well, you couldn't see this since this isn't a video show, but you made the sign of the cross. <laughs> 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 it's a weird choice. Yeah. <laughs> 
All right. You are now married. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> right. <laughs> okay, now hold on. You didn't make a comic book reference, did you? Yeah, I kind of did. Okay. <laughs> okay, that time he did the Dr. The Manhattan yeah. um, oh, yeah, uh, molecule know. symbol. <laughs> I was thinking it was the Mars Attacks international sign of the donut. <laughs> that's that's where I okay. read that one. But basically, uh, you know, um, you know, uh, you know, I, I shouldn't have to ask. You know, some authoritative body to do things to mind my own business well, and do what I want to do. I, I think Josh just wants to make marriage illegal right now. <laughs> just so, like, <laughs> it's not, yeah, it's just not a legal issue to me. It shouldn't oh, be, okay. anyways. Did you know what I mean? Bring that up with your wife. There, <laughs> there, <laughs> there are financial reasons to have documentation saying that some people are allowed more rights to your stuff than other people. Right, but I it basically a marriage is a contract. You yeah. can write your own contract, and I can sign it, and that's a valid legal contract. Are you proposing? No. <laughs> <laughs> hey, we didn't have to involve the government at all. The only right. time we ever have mm -hmm. to involve the government is if there's a conflict, right? And we need to resolve some sort of conflict mm -hmm. between the contract. Mm -hmm. Can I? This is turning well, into a different kind of show. Yeah. I'll I agree. I agree that the government should not have any right to decide who can and can't get married as a base uh, theology or as a base moral. I, I think that is ludicrous. But that we have to have rules. Can I can I ask a question that I wouldn't have wanted to ask before gay marriage was legalized? Yeah. Okay. So there's the there's like the, the 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 common argument against gay marriage that's often made and then often dismissed is like the slippery slope argument when people would say like well if we allow you know gay people to get married then next people will want to marry x right. you know where it's been different things people mm -hmm. have like you know compared it to like you know, will want to marry their pets if they feel a connection to them or inanimate objects or like you know polygamy or polyamorous relationships right uh and equating to all of those things my question is like i don't my, my question is specifically about like polyamorous relationships people equated gay marriage to that and i don't think legalizing gay marriage will lead to legalizing polyamorous relationships mm -hmm. but why aren't we okay with legalizing polyamorous relationships like who gives a shit well, the most recent cases. I lived in Utah for a while, and they're they're the ones that prosecute most of it because it's uh, fundamentalist Mormons, uh, right. Like Warren Jeffs. That it's because they usually have a compound and they're having sex with children against their will. Okay, but that's a different. <laughs> and problem. I understand. Like I agree with you. Like that, but that's it's if, just a. If there just happens to be a real trendy thruple in upstate New York, like. And isn't there fraud involved too? Like if you have multiple wives and you have, let's say, three wives, you're legally married to one and you have two others that you provide for, but then they also apply for like food stamps and stuff like that and they take advantage of, of subsidies. Right, that's Just why we like, need to make it legal so that they can all get into one big marriage and they can't game the system, right? Just as a basic <laughs> ethic, yeah. I think the problem with polygamy is – in, in a, and this is going to be a weird analogy, but hear me out. Uh, I think it's essentially the same problem with prostitution, which is that at, in its very most basic form, if you say, well, if everyone is perfectly consenting, what's the problem? And there isn't one. But the problem is that there are always so many other awful things associated with it. Drugs like pimps and fucking d unsanitary conditions and STDs and like there's so many other things that like make prostitution dangerous for everyone involved that's why it's bad I I if you could avoid all of that stuff and just have it exist in a vacuum it'd be fine polygamy is the Prost same thing pr prostitution is a really bad example if that's your argument because most of those negative things you're listing around prostitution exist because it's illegal like the reason for so much of the danger is because we like make it illegal so when it's a crime you can't seek proper legal recourse when the ne negative or dangerous things are happening well maybe i i that that's a that's a historical argument i'm just talking about the fact is it exists today right if you're to, if you're to judge today 
whether or not it's an okay thing to engage in. The problem of it being illegal is the least of your concerns. Uh, <laughs> right. I mean, polygamy, I'm just, the, the only part of that analogy that I'm, I, that I'm using it for is that if theoretically everyone involved in a polyamorous or a polygamous relationship or marriage is 100% consenting, sane, and fine with it, and happy, there is no problem with it. The thing is, is that just rarely happens without a hundred other awful things being involved. Hundred, maybe. But the problem is the way we consume the media. It's in a vacuum. We, it's always about the negative things. And when we see a na a negative thing that happened within a group, we assume that it's just the way the human brain thinks. We 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 assume that all those people are like that. All right. cops are bad and racist or. You yeah. know, all polygamous, <laughs> you know, all polygamists are child molesters <laughs> no. and this and that, you know, like that's the way we think because that's the way it's portrayed in the media and we don't learn about it otherwise. So you're saying you want to start a gay polygamous prostitution house? <laughs> no, I, I just think a, a lot of times things aren't as bad as as the way sometimes they seem. No, no, that's all. I'm saying. What I'm saying, I, I'm asking, I, I, I'm going to ask this as a genuine question. Yeah. Is that in like the coming decades, is that going to be another civil rights movement? Are people going to be like, we demand our like right to like three marry? Possibly. I mean, well, the, the, the honest answer for me is I don't care. <laughs> it doesn't affect me at all. I mean, people should have the right to do whatever they want, but I'm not involved. You know, I, I had this argument today, or this, not argument, but, it, well, argue with myself today, which is that one of the things we always hear about gay marriage is when someone says, I don't think two men should be able to get married. Uh, you know, the liberal response is often, why do you care? Right? That's mm -hmm. the right response. It is yeah. the right response, but it can also go the other way. When someone says gay marriage should be legal, you can say the same thing. Why do you care? It doesn't affect you. Does it only, should you only care when it's positive? I mean, whether you care, whether or not you feel, you should feel, feel that you should be involved. I mean, I agree with Josh. The government should just not be involved at all. It, it, no. It's not up to me whether two people can or can't get married. I, I, it doesn't affect me. Well, I mean, you should care rights. when when the government says we're the authoritative figure on this mm -hmm. and we're going to determine who can do what and can't do what. They have to do that fairly. They can't discriminate. Yeah, they do. I don't. <laughs> right, but that's why you should care. I mean, you, you you contribute to that as a taxpayer and a citizen of the United States. All right. I mean, you, I, I mean, don't. You're basically me, saying I don't care how my government functions. Let me let me make this very clear. I don't agree with the point I'm making. It just seemed interest to, interesting to me <laughs> when I thought of it. Like, you, because you always hear, like, why do you care? Why do you care that gay people can't get married? Right? Like, doesn't that work both ways? I think well, it's like a basic civil rights question. Really. I, I agree. Well, you know, I it, totally agree. It's, well, this is the fastest moving issue and like political discourse. Like, it, everybody here in high school was afraid someone was going to call them gay. And like, like yeah. I mean, and then you wouldn't have been like, well, I think they should get married. They'd be like, they'd beat the living shit out of you. <laughs> like, it's amazing right. how far this has come this fast, and yet it seems like it should have happened like a long time ago. That's why I think yeah. you're kind of like, well, I mean, duh. Why wasn't this right already a thing? But that's yeah. that's how slow everything works in America. Right. right. Yeah, what? as slow as this issue happened, it was lightning fast. Yeah. <laughs> which is bizarre. Oh, yeah. No, and it's like I said, I, I've been trying to put together the joke about this. But like, it's been a little bit more than 10 years since the first state legalized gay marriage, and now it's just the law. Uh, mm -hmm. And, like, I don't know. Uh, uh, maybe this isn't a fair analogy, but, like, for example, how many years was it between, let's say, the um, – um, Emancipation Proclamation and the Civil Rights Act. Closer to a century? I legitimately yeah. don't have any clue. <laughs> Jimmy hates history. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. <laughs> well, and, 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 and even then, with that example, at, like, since the Civil Rights Act, how far do we still have to come before, like, you know, racial minorities mm -hmm. will reach, you know, yeah. economic parity? Mm-hmm. Uh, 
I think they have a lot. I think I think racial minorities still have way farther to go than sexual ones at this point. Yeah, that's probably true. Um, and I think it really goes to show you how fast your personal, like persecuted minority, can come if your minority includes some white men. Uh, yeah, right. Uh, I and I'm going. All I can say. Uh, to argue with you on that issue, Will, is that you seem to have forgotten that we have a black president, president <laughs> right. and therefore racism is solved. You're right. I'm sorry. So as soon as we have a gay pre, what are the odds that we've probably already had a gay president? That's weird. Like you can't, you can't have like the odds that we have already had a black president. There's a speculation or zero, on one but, of the, uh, you know, a hundred years ago or whatever. Because he get he never got married. What well, president never got married? Um, right before Lincoln, Buchanan is the only bachelor president. Yeah, I think there was the speculation he had a really close friend too. Yeah, and was never married. Yeah, a lot of marriages are political anyway. I mean, there's 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 every chance that one of our presidents could have been gay. We you don't know. I mean. Who cares? It's history. It's in the past, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Hey, let's do. Let's talk about some current history. <laughs> That's the news segment, everybody. <laughs> Joshua. 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 Bossler. News. Hello, everybody. Pretentious man-child Shia LaBeouf posted a short film online after, online after debuting it at Con Film Festival last year. BuzzFeed noticed it seemed awfully similar to a 2001 Daniel Klaus comic. It's a pretty popular comic. Calling it almost a direct adaptation. Uh... The original author says he's never met uh, LaBeouf and was shocked at the film's use of his words and images, adding, I actually can't imagine what was going through his mind. <laughs> Online, LaBeouf apologized uh, for the similarity. Then BuzzFeed then noticed that parts of his apology that he put on Twitter sounded awfully similar to a four-year-old entry on Yahoo Answers. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> I remember this. And then uh, the actor turned up on YouTube over the weekend doing this. And I'm busting and I'm coming in. Watching because he's sick when he be coming with these bars and shit. Oh shit, it's me. I'm so fucking disgusted. Busting already said it and I get it. I'm cousin. Yeah, I'm so cuzzed out. And you already know me, homie. You can't really clone me unless you hold me and you fold me. It don't make no sense, but I still get it like I got it though. Rocking like a novice, but I rock it like a rocket though. <laughs> Got no words left. Okay, that's 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 a good. That's, that's a good enough. <laughs> I like, agree. I, and everybody should okay. everybody should Google or should go to YouTube and search Shia LaBeouf rapping because the visual is part of this. He's shirtless with like a long rat tail. I mean, he's really in the middle of this circle of dudes, and he's like. Oh. Keep going. <laughs> <laughs> but now a representative of the rap group uh, Anomalies says that his quote unquote freestyling that LaBeouf ripped off the lyrics from its 1990 song, 1999 song. Um, I forgot to put the title in. So now he's being, you know, they're accusing him and you can find the song. That he he basically lifted a bunch of lyrics off off of this. They should have written a song. better song. Yeah, well, not all of it. <laughs> I was I mean, gonna say like, yeah, if there's a viral video of like a white dude doing terrible, laughable freestyle, like, and you're gonna come forward to say no. That's not terrible white boy <laughs> rapping. That was my written song. <laughs> Well, my thing about it is, it's like, I, I, I think Shiloh Booth is a good actor. Can we, can I pause you for just one second? Can we get on, on, on the same page real quick about how to pronounce his last name? Shia LaBeouf. Shia, Shia, Shia. Oh, Shia LaBeouf. LaBeouf, LaBeouf, LaBeouf. Where are we all at? Shia LaBeouf. LaBeouf? I'm going to say LaBeouf. LaBeouf? <laughs> I just knocked my microphone over. I was vigorously pointing at Joshua, and I almost knocked over my microphone. You scared microphone. me. Yes, Shia. Shia LaBeouf. Okay, Shia LaBeouf. Continue. You know, Sorry, when we're I talking to... about the real controversial issues, I, I, you know, like how to pronounce last names. I didn't give a fuck about gay marriage, but this, I'm so, like, Shia LaBeouf is very important to me. That's not true, homosexual community. I like Shia LaBeouf's acting. I think he's a good 
actor. Okay. Stick with what you're good at. Maybe you're not cr- so creative. Why do you got it? Why does he have to be an uh, an artist and create things? And I firmly believe that it's tongue in cheek. I don't think he intended to do this as good rap. I think he is now playing a character that is a fictionalized version of himself that is way more buffoonish and way more out of touch than he actually is. I think it's all an act. I think he is... I don't think he's smart enough to do that. I I think he is... Um, Who's the comedian? Andy Kaufman. I think he's Andy Kaufmaning us. I really do. Oh, no. You don't think so? <laughs> no way. No. There's so much crazy shit that he does. Whenever he he's always on. Like whenever people catch him, like he always has a weird thing up his sleeve to do. I don't know. He was a child star. <laughs> yeah, but when he was a child star, he was very he he wasn't fucking crazy. Like he, No, but like look at the history of people that are child stars. That's true. Well, was he a child star? He was a he was a he was young, but was he a child star? I think it was a Disney Channel show, wasn't it? Oh, I don't know. I, I, I don't know. I think it's like he's he's not satisfied with himself as an actor. Being a great actor isn't good enough for him. He thinks he's above that. He thinks he is like a, a prodigy. He's a, it's like like the, the way Con, Kanye West is. A, he's a good rapper, but he's not he's not some sort of prodigy. You're good at what you do. Stick with what you. Yeah, but Kanye's not like plagiarizing everything that he does (laughs) exactly well that's the thing if you're going to be creative create something don't lift a bunch of stuff and then try and take credit for it like you're something that you're not if if i had to guess um i think like i think he made this movie that was like essentially like a plot and a lot of like some of the writing and the dialogue was stolen from this comic book i don't think he did that tongue in cheekly i think he's like ripped off some comic book that he thought he could make this movie out of and it was some obscure comic book and nobody would notice it and then he would have successfully made a movie i think everything that came after that he went oh shit i have to own this or this has to become some sort of weird performance like like when he posted a public apology but it was copy and pasted from a like yahoo answers thing that was like a weird power move. That right. that was him going into See, this, mode. This stuff didn't start happening with him until people started making fun of him for being a shitty actor. Like he started becoming one of the mo- like when in the when the Indiana Jones movie came out, everyone was like, "This is terrible because Shia LaBeouf sucks." Like that started happening, and that's when all the weird stuff started happening. Yeah. And I think it was an aggressive fuck you to everybody like oh you want to see what like charlie sheen kind of did this like charlie sheen is not nearly as nuts as he was made out to be by the media but when the media decided to make charlie sheen a character he just he took it and ran with it and started playing a fictionalized version of himself in life and now he's people got tired of it and now you never hear about him again there might be like over exaggerating that but it's like you're missing two elements of drugs and fame together and just fuck yeah. right. you right. have you have ego and i think he's really dumb i just think he's dumb <laughs> oh, yeah. that's why he copied that's why he yeah. copied and pasted he's just dumb and he, he's not an original person he's just good he's a good actor and you don't have to be really smart to be a good actor no it's you not, don't he it, it's totally possible that he's just dumb, but it could, like, he's already famous, which means that he has a team of people surrounding him that could be, like, helping to dictate his actions. Like, like there might be a group of people who are like, we need to keep him famous. It doesn't matter whether or not he's liked or respected, he has to stay famous. And if we can right. get a video of him doing, like, shitty white boy rap that's going to go viral, then it keeps him famous. Like, it's, it's no different than the stuff that, like, Paris Hilton does to continue being famous. Yeah. Just make sure people are always talking about her. But is Shia LaBeouf going to have a sex tape, then? If he feels he needs to. I don't know. I don't think he is as... I hope so. <laughs> I don't think he is as out of touch or unaware as he seems to be. Well, I, I, I mean, I don't, I don't know if I'm jumping the gun here, but you didn't even get to the green screen video yet. Oh, yeah, we'll play that. What is oh, it's his know. motivational speech? His motive, yeah. Do it, <laughs> Jesus! I'm sorry, just <laughs> do it. <laughs> Don't let your dreams be dreams. 
<laughs> Yesterday, you said tomorrow. So just do it! There's like a Hulk Make Hogan flex that he's doing. Come true! Just do it! He's like flexing like Hulk Some Hogan and dream success he's while pacing you're angrily. Wake up and work hard at it! Nothing is impossible! He, now that I think about it, he, he stole that from Nike. <laughs> okay. I don't know, man. He, like, I, that's. But that video, if you look it up and actually watch that video, that is all, and like, like I said at the beginning, shot on a green screen. That yeah. was made, that's not him making a motivational speech. That's him attempting to look crazy so that people will steal it, like, green screen it onto like goofy stuff yeah. and make a meme out of it. Right. Like he's be making himself a meme of him being crazy. I agree. I that he knows I think he knows exactly what he's doing. In that one he does. It's set up for for that purpose. No that that wasn't like and there's no audience there. No one hired him to give a motivational speech like I, I didn't put it on there. There's a clip of him talking about Michael Douglas. And he said that he's the epitome of strength. <laughs> <laughs> that is a goddamn Brian Regan joke. <laughs> yeah, it is. Is it really? And they the, stole and it from the, Brian Regan. And it's, the, no, it's, and it's the name of one of his specials. The he epitome talks of hyperbole. Yeah. I, yeah. I, think, I think we can put a, put a pin in Shia LaBeouf. Not how to say his name, but how crazy he is. No. <laughs> Uh, China's State Administration of Cultural Heritage has recently concluded that 1,219 miles of the Great Wall have come down, with another 736 miles in poor condition. That figure is about 30% of the wall's length of the roughly 5,500 miles of the wall attributed to the Ming Dynasty, which was from 1368 AD to 1644 AD. Residents who live along the Great Wall used uh, used to pull down bricks to sell for as little as five dollars, or use in the construction of their own homes. <laughs> Other sections were destroyed during urban expansion uh, of the building or or building of roads. Lightning, earthquakes, and floods have also caused damage. When China's director of state administration of opinions, James Putnam, was asked to comment, he said he replied, "It's old. Who cares?" Not <laughs> It's almost like you pulled that right out of my thoughts. <laughs> uh, I I think that that's, I think it's funny that it's still up at all. I mean, yeah, it's true. Well, but like, it it should definitely stay up at this point because it exists, which means that it's like a marketing tool. Like, there's right. more money in keeping it up than knocking it down. Yeah, there's no like, dollars. yeah. Um, you know, get, make a documentary. Somebody with cancer is going to walk the whole distance before they die. And then it's is there anybody Netflix. like, is, is there anybody, is there like a government, like a Chinese government, uh, group or whatever dedicated to like maintenance of it? Or is it just, kinda... uh, well, I, I think there is maybe to maintain, it's just such a massive thing. Yeah. Uh, they, they had enacted laws years ago, uh, to try and reduce the, like the destruction of it, like finding people and stuff. But they, they don't, it's not really enforceable. They don't yeah. have any way to enforce it, it seems like. So at this point, should they fix it? Should, like, do you fix it and, like, maintain the Great Wall of China? Certainly not. Why? Because that's the thing you have. Tourism dollars. That's that, what we were talking about. They, they, but then that. does it does it not become, va like, valid anymore? Like, if you fix it, then is it like, well, this isn't real. This was built t four years ago. What, who cares about that? Now it's just a wall that well, someone built. I can I can argue that you could get they, they've lost thirty percent of it. You could, as long as they have five percent of that wall left, that's still plenty of wall for people to come look at. Yeah, but was, what makes it the Great Wall? Well, well it's, it's not. It, 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 what made it the Great Wall is its purpose. Like it, it, it had a purpose. Now it now it's just an attraction, and no one's going to see the whole thing anyway. Ryan. Oh, sorry. Lots of, well, lots of people died making it. So, yeah, putting it up now would be kind of like, yeah, oh, uh, there was some overtime. Uh, they didn't really, <laughs> you know, we didn't get paid the right amount. Like, well, that's not. Yeah, and I'm sure there's a fucking dozen bodies encased somewhere in Hoover Dam. 
Yeah. <laughs> is that is it is the amount of death that went into making it? Yeah, it valid? Adds to the authenticity. Because then should we all base which movies we go to on how many who had the most fatal stuntmen core? Yeah. Uh, yes. All right. I, I don't disagree with that logic. I just wanted to make sure you were on board. Jo- Joshua, as a fan of history, what, what do you think? Well, I think it's just part of their heritage. It's something that their ancestors built thousand, you know, thousand years ago or whatever. Yeah. And they, you know, they want to preserve it to know where they came from and what, you know, their her- their culture and heritage. Uh, that's not the question, though. The question is, how much is it worth to you? To me? No, to them. I mean, every, oh, everybody would like to have everything last forever, but it, at a certain point, it costs money and time, and that's and that's why it's falling down. Be- that's why I asked if there's a government program or a gov or a you know. Well, a- it's China, so yes, there's a government program <laughs> to fix it. But you know what I mean? Like, there's a there's a uh, I don't even know a board of directors based around pre- the 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 Great Wall Preservation Society, and do they have a budget? I mean, yeah, I don't, I, I don't. Know at that a certain much about point, it. I'm sure all of that. I'm sure there was at a certain point, and then all of that money got diverted to like building roads or something much more important, and. At, at, at a certain point, yeah, if every, if you could snap your fingers and have every historical monument perfectly preserved, we would all do it. But it's the question isn't, do you think they should maintain it or rebuild it? The question is, how much of their already super thinly stretched national resources do they devote to it? All of it. <laughs> I feel like... <laughs> See... <laughs> to me, the question was, do they maintain it and do they rebuild it? Or is the destruction part of the historical significance of it? Right. Uh, uh, because to me, it's like, is cost really the big problem? Is just building a straight brick wall of China the expense? Is it You're that doing costly? That in- well, you'd be doing that instead of building a straight, even road. For sure. Well, they can't. I mean, the cost would be preventing further destruction of it. I think, you know, <laughs> right. the, if you do get caught destroying part of it, it's like eight hundred and six dollar fine. Yeah, that's fine. So maybe it'll pay for itself, and then you take that eight hundred six dollars and maybe fix it up, or in your case, knock it down. <laughs> or if you're caught destroying the wall, you have to rebuild a section of it. Right. <laughs> you're yeah. responsible right. for that ten you, feet. You work on it until you die. Then it has. Some kind of life significance. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, you know, we're solving all sorts of problems. That's right. <laughs> all right. Many companies are raising the white flag when it comes to selling the Confederate flag. Mm. Some of the more notable companies consist of Walmart, eBay, Sears, Target, Etsy, and Amazon. Today, NASCAR chairman Brian France said the sport will be aggressive in disassociating the flag from its events. He quote said, and I assume this is how he sounds, we want to go as far as we can to eliminate the presence of that there flag. (laughs) The the moment comes on the heels of last week's massacre in Charleston, South Carolina, which left nine black church members dead and a white supremacist supremacist gunman uh, charged with the atrocity. Uh, So... uh... I want to read this to you. I go to the ESPN website and look at sports all the time. And, uh, and, and there was a headline and it was, oh, fuck, it's gone now. It was a couple of days ago, but it was like they interviewed some major college basketball coaches, John Calipari, Bill Self at KU. And they were like, uh, coaches make strong stand against Confederate flag. And I was just like, is that news? Is that your headline story? Like, really? I don't know. It seems nuts to me, but whatever. Well, it still was up at a bunch of places, and NASCAR still flew. Like it, it made sense. Like people Good, that, get rid of it. Fuck those people. Yeah. Well, people like uh, they say things like it's a cultural heritage, gotta have, and other people like it's racist. It's both. It's your cultural heritage of racism. The people, the people <laughs> that yeah. the people that display that flag though proudly around their house and 
and have shirts and they're not history buffs no they're idiots <laughs> no at the risk of alienating jimmy curve listeners <laughs> if you are a supporter of maintaining the confederate flag in public and you are arguing for that i don't respect your opinion mostly okay. because it's just history and jimmy don't Here, like that no because it's fucking stupid i'm not okay Going back to the actual news story, I'm not going to argue in favor of uh, displaying the Confederate flag, but I will argue that, like, I'm not going to get mad at eBay if eBay sells Confederate flags. Like, if, because, like, it's an auction site, people list things on it. Like, I don't, I'm not going to be like, fuck you, we all have to pick at eBay because people have listed, uh, like, Confederate flags on eBay. Like, yeah. I, I agree. Like, who gives a shit? Well, uh, Apple removed some uh games yeah. that oh. that are like civil war games because they had the confederate flag i thought that was ryan's strike, trying to appeal to me <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> they did and i don't ne i don't agree with that i don't I, either i think that's, that's dumb. silly yeah i mean it's, it's kind of a weird reaction to such an atrocity i mean i get that it's in south carolina and they still display that flag over the capitol and i get that issue but like the the total like uh, you know, like as if this is going to change, you know, future, atro you know, racial atrocities. Right. From happening. Well, yeah. Is this just a way to make people feel better? No, the, the problem isn't with the flag itself. If, if, if you collect flags or you're a history buff, <laughs> yeah, you can have a Confederate flag in your house and it's part of a collection and that's fine. <laughs> The, the problem is with the people who want to fly the flag in public and make political points. Right. You don't think they should well, be able to do that? Th this yeah. is the only time this uh, a sentence structured like this will uh, be accurate. It should be illegal, but I hate them. Sure. I get Flags it. don't kill people. <laughs> right. People kill people. Racists kill people. <laughs> right. Yeah. Black people. No, I don't think it should be illegal to, like, make political statements or fly a flag or anything like that. But I don't respect that. Right. Yeah. I think that's the whole thing. Nobody – well, and also, like, the big thing was that they were flying that in South Carolina and that had one of the pastors, like, it, his funeral, he had to be under – like, went under that flag. Like, right. that's incredibly offensive and awful. Yeah. Oh, and really? And the government shouldn't be, like, sanctioning that is what – like, anybody can buy the, a flag and then – I can encourage people to buy as many Confederate flags as they want and fly them out of their house so I know, like, where the assholes live that I don't want to <laughs> hang out with. Them. So, Especially because, no, I've seen a couple – in Nebraska That's since stupid. this kerfuffle happened. And there's no, like, if you're in Nebraska, are you really going, like, That's my heritage? I can't remember no. where I saw this before, but there was a news story where a guy had a noose hanging on, a, on his tree, and, like, the police came and made him take it down. And he had some argument about, like, it's performance art. But, like, he had a noose hanging from a yeah, tree. Yeah, it was Barack Obama. He had an effigy of Barack Obama. Is that what it was? Yeah, I think that's what it was. I'm thinking, I might think I'm thinking of a different thing. There wasn't anything attached to the Ooh. one I was thinking Cause he, of. Because that guy said it was performance art. Right. Oh, uh, uh, I don't, okay, that's terrible, but I also don't necessarily agree with, like, making him take it down. Like, I'm I don't I'm not used to being the here, radical one. Here, here here's here's why. Here's here's my thing with both of these. At a certain point you're just being an aggressive asshole and trying to offend people. Like you're not making any statement. You're not trying to affect positive change. You're not trying to like ensure free what? That's their point though. They have a right to be that way. They do. That's freedom of speech. That's the First Amendment. That's not what freedom it's, of speech is. Yes, it is. It's the no, right it's to not. offend. Freedom of speech is not the right to just go around being a dick to everybody. Freedom yeah, I mean, it, it's of, protected under the First Amendment. Of, freedom of speech is the right to defend yourself against an oppressive government yeah. and speak out against it. That's People don't understand what fucking freedom of speech is. It's not the right to just run around yelling racist shit all the time. That's... You're, that's, right. that's not a protected right. You're just being a dick. Right, but that, but people who behave that way, that should be socially policed. That shouldn't be legally policed. Like, we don't want to be put in a situation where the government controls whether or not people are acting like dicks. I agree, but at a certain point it becomes harassment. And harassment is harassment illegal. Harassment is illegal. And, like, hanging a noose in your yard is harassment. Right, exactly. but there, there, there is a. It's actually a threat. There is a social yeah. consequence to that, though. 
the guy's probably alienated and no one likes him. <laughs> right. And, so, I mean, there's a reason why NASCAR decided to do as much as possible to, to get rid of any Confederate flags around it is because it, it in the long run, it's has a, it's going to have a negative effect on the business. That's yeah. the incentive, not a law saying you can't ha display something. You know what I mean? I think the real point here is that uh, a lot of the South is real dumb. There should, they, have, <laughs> they have the Confederate battle flag in the state of Mississippi, and they're like, oh, yeah, we should get rid of that. Like, they just had this for so long, and they were lazy, and they didn't want to offend all the racists that are there, and they're like, oh, shit, let's get rid of this. In Kentucky, they have uh, a statue of Abraham Lincoln next to a statue of Jefferson Davis. Like, no. <laughs> yeah, they you know, weren't friends. Equally, <laughs> two equally valid <laughs> historical figures that we all can respect and admire from our past. Well. I don't know who Jefferson Davis is. <laughs> oh. He was the president of the Confederacy. Okay. <laughs> Hey. Is that is that really surprising to anyone? <laughs> nah, that's surprising. <laughs> I don't fucking. The surprising part is the part where you s admitted it instead of just darting your eyes back and forth for a few seconds. I wanted to know who he was. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's fine. Now I know. I, I'll forget it. I think that anyone who hangs uh, a noose from a tree in their yard should legally be forced to rebuild 10 feet of the Great Wall of China. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Penalty Jimmy, enforced. Or help Let, knock it down. Or would, help knock it down. I don't would give a you, shit. Would you be offended <laughs> if I hung a noose in my yard as long as I actually used it to kill myself? <laughs> <laughs> that would bother me. For okay. sure. You know, like, I'm... I, Jesus. I... I, I, I'm arguing about this, but if somebody hung, if one of my neighbors, like, had just a noose hanging from a tree in their yard, I wouldn't do anything. I'd be like, that person's a fucking idiot. But I wouldn't call the police. Like, I would, I mean, I, yeah, I'd, it's in their yard. I don't really care. If anything, do the right thing and go, hey, come on, what's up, buddy? You doing all right? I'm, te I'm <laughs> <laughs> well, look, I, so the reason I asked about the Nazi flag is I'm trying, like, I'm technically Jewish. If my the next door neighbor had a Nazi flag, I, well, but I, I might be scared. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you I mean, should be. I mean, that's, that's, the, that's why, that's why the government has to step in because it's a threat. Like, I'm afraid those people are going to kill me. Right, but if, we... if you're a black person and a white guy is hanging a noose in a tree from his yard, that's that that guy could kill you. I don't agree with it, but we've kind of agreed as a society that that's part of the risk you have to take. Like we've all agreed as a society that we have to protect the right of the Ku Klux Klan to exist, and as long as they're not making any overt threats of violence. You know, like, like that's just the world we live in. And no, I don't I, know that there's a good answer, but I'm just saying that, like, I, I, I'm, I'm just trying to put myself in that position of if, if there's a person who's just, just broadcasting to the world, we think that the world would be, be a better place if everyone like you was dead. You know, <laughs> I think, <laughs> yeah, I think that's, I think that's terrifying. I'd rather know that that person feels like <laughs> that than never know. It's a good point. Oh, it's like what Ryan said earlier. Yeah. Like, I want to know yeah, exactly. who, where all the assholes are. Ryan, I feel like as the least screamy member on this podcast, mm -hmm. we invited you onto the show and then shouted at each other oh, for an hour. Uh, I was raised to be polite, so I was like, oh, uh, wait, no. Uh, <laughs> no, uh, no, 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 they're still talking. Okay. I, I would like right now to give you a forum to give us any thoughts on any of the previous topics from the past hour that we may have shouted over. I just uh, would like to reiterate that Will Doherty uh, wants to uh, have polygamous marriage in the Ku Klux Klan, <laughs> apparently. That's what I've gotten. That is correct. Uh, anything else? Plugs. Does anyone have plugs? Yeah, I do. I'm not going to be here next week, so I should probably do them. Oh, yeah. Hey, uh, join us next week where if your least favorite part of the Jimmy Curve is Joshua Vossler... We will be sans Joshua next week, so join us for that. That's and if you exciting. really like me, I'm <laughs> going to be putting shit on uh, Snapchat on my vacation so you see what I'm up to. Nice. I think it's my Snapchat is just my name. Anyways, all right. I'm doing, uh, I'm doing Missing Kitten Comedy Show July 14th at 8 p.m. at the Pizza Shop Collective in Omaha. 
Cool. And then that same week, I'm doing the Throwback Thursday show. You're on that, aren't you? I am. I I mean, and I it's assume the, because I needed a driver. At the Lookout Lounge? <laughs> it's at the Lookout Lounge, and uh, what time is that one? Nine? Uh, I don't remember. Probably. Eight or nine o'clock. Mm-hmm. <laughs> If you want to see some, if you want to see some baby pictures of poor old Will Doherty, you want to see what led to this mess, (laughs) uh, come to the Throwback Thursday show on July 17th. Ryan? I will be on Zoolaria 16th. The July 5th. Uh, I think I'm doing a longer set. So, yeah, come out and see me stumble and look at notes like a total unprofessional. (laughs) (laughs) Love it. Can't wait. Uh, I will be doing short-form improv with Big Canvas at the Backline Theater on Saturday, July 11th. We're going to be playing a lot of short-form improv games, a la Whose Line Is It Anyway? Should be a fun show. That is July 11th at 8 p.m. at the Backline Improv Theater. And that's going to do it for this episode. Closing thoughts, anybody? Going once. Going twice. The right of the polygamists and the KKK to marry must be preserved. Sold! <laughs> and for Joshua Vossler. Goodbye, everybody. Will Doherty. White supremacy. And special guest Ryan Dowd. Um, I would like to not support Will's statements. <laughs> Nor would anyone. I have been your host, Jimmy Putnam. Thank you and good night. <laughs>